Hi, welcome. I am Chris Rakedahl, Superintendent of Public Instruction, coming to you from the old Capitol building in Olympia, Washington. Welcome to the Superintendent's High School Art Show, our 49th anniversary. There is so much amazing visual and performing art to see. Let's get going. Today's program comes from Olympia, Washington. These are the traditional lands of three area tribes, the Chehalis to the south, the Squaxin Island people to our west and north, and the Nisqually to our northeast and east. The stage has band of the Squaxin Island nation known as the Southern Inlet peoples um, have had this land since time immemorial and we are so honored and grateful to come to you from Olympia, but also this is a statewide art show and we recognize the indigenous people and first peoples all across the state of Washington. This year's theme is mirrors and windows, visions of knowing. Art is expression, whether it's performing arts or visual arts or all of its other mediums. It's our ability to give to the world, our feelings, our thoughts, our emotions, our understanding. And it's also a mirror back on ourselves. It's the way we touch base with who we are. That's the power of art. We're gonna get started right away with our first award from Governor Jay Inslee. The governor is an artist himself, and he takes very seriously this role of picking a piece every year. So here's the governor's award. Hi, Governor Jamesley here, and I'm so happy to be joining you all today at the 40th Annual Superintendent's High School Art Show. I really look forward to this award uh, every year because it's an opportunity uh, for me to see these beautiful masterpieces from our talented students. And there were so many impressive pieces to, like, to select from this year. It was a tough decision. But I am pleased to announce that Margot Massey from Kamayakin High School, who's painting George on my mind, is the winner of the Governor's Choice Award. Congratulations, Margot. Hi, I'm Margo Massey. I go to Kamaikan High School and I live in Kenwick, Washington. I'm a junior in high school and art has made a difference in my life because it has become an outlet for my creativity. I painted Georgia on my mind in May of last year. I was inspired by the warm weather and I wanted to create a summery piece that I could hang up. I also wanted to practice painting fruit more. Thank you. We know the arts improve our overall health and happiness, and the arts contribute to the state's economy, which are uh, good reasons why they're designated May as Arts Education Month. So congratulations to all of the students in this year's award. Show a special thanks uh, to all the art educators and advocates. Congrats again, Margo. Looking forward to your career in art. Uh, thanks to the governor for his uh, engagement every single year. It's awesome. I almost picked that piece as well. It is so beautiful. It's I'm in a color right now. So this contrast of that bright orange and the darker colors is awesome. So again, thank you, governor. As you all well know, if you've been following the art show for years, uh, students are really recognized, not just for the incredible art, but there's a $200 scholarship or gift that comes with it. They are also the beneficiaries of an incredible piece of art themselves. This award this year was crafted in a really cool way. Hilltop artists in Tacoma did the incredible glass work and students in the career and technical education programs at Rochester High School in South Thurston County uh, worked on the wooden bases. So again, to all of our students, congratulations on your art and uh, we hope you appreciate that artists helped engage in your recognition. The superintendent's art show clearly focuses on visual arts, but also the performing arts, music, dance, theater, so many other mediums. 
This year, we have a co-host to the art show, Amelia from Capitol High School in Olympia, Washington. She will take it from here on recognition of performing arts. Take it away, Amelia. Hi, my name is Amelia Rand Anderson. I'm coming to you from the former theater at Capitol High School. This is my happy place. For me, theater is a place where I can feel that I can explore my craft and learn from my peers in an educational environment. I am here as a representative of Washington State Thespians, a branch of the Educational Theater Association, and representing thousands of students across Washington who study theater. So let's get going with the performing arts segments. First, Mariachi from Mount Vernon High School. Their mission is to keep Mexican music traditions alive within the youth and the community. They perform at events and festivals all over Washington. Under the direction of Ramon Rivera, they are performing Los Barandales del Puente. Well, congratulations to the Mount Vernon High School team. There's over a hundred students engaged in that mariachi dance and music. Mariachi is just a beautiful and amazing form of art. It bridges the Americas and really it very much bridges Eastern and Western Washington, as you can see now by the work that's happening in the Mount Vernon in the Skagit Valley. Just totally awesome and congratulations. Up next, we have an award from our OSPI staff team. I specifically wanna give a shout out to them. We all know how hard the last two years have been, but our staff has just been incredible. They persevere, they support districts, students, communities, families. Um, so every year they get a chance to do this. This really, I think, has an emotional connection to how hard they have worked and how much they recognize what students have been through as well. Introducing our award is Elizabeth Schmitz. She leads our environmental uh, education work here at OSPI. So take it away. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Schmitz. I am the Environmental and Sustainability Education Program Supervisor at the Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction. I am honored to present the OSPI Staff Choice Award, Botanical Refuge by Isabella Ellis, AC Davis High School, Teacher Carol Holtz, Yakima School District, ESD 105. Hello, my name is Isabel Ellis. I am a junior at Davis High School and I live in Yakima, Washington. Over the course of the past few years, not only have I had the opportunity to explore many areas of art, I have also found myself turning more and more towards the outdoors. 
At the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, a need for change and growth while facing extreme stagnation drew me, like many others, even closer to nature. As depicted in my piece, Botanical Refuge, this need manifested itself in gardening. My garden quite literally became the roots of my being, grounding me, teaching me, and quieting my mind. After spending so much time with my hands in the dirt and my lungs breathing in the clean, fresh air, my garden and what it taught me eventually became a distinct part of who I am. I made this piece, Botanical Refuge, to pay homage to this and to recognize the collective individuality of our global experience. This piece is meaningful to me because I believe each and every student should have the opportunity to form meaningful and reciprocal relationships with nature. Research and anecdotal evidence show that when youth have meaningful outdoor learning opportunities, they benefit academically and have improved physical, mental, and emotional health. This student's artwork literally illustrates these benefits. Again, thank you to the OSPI staff for this selection. You know, the use of flowers and art this time of year with the longest spring it seems we've ever had is inspiring. We can't wait to get out into our gardens. And again, thank you to our student artists, particularly here, who's really put an incredible expression together with nature. Up next is our Jurors Awards. Now, the really cool part about this is students from all over our state, nine different educational service district regions, 122 students submit art. We all get the chance to benefit from this, but we've got some experts out there, museum curators, educators, folks in higher education, just folks who have made a profession and a career out of the arts. In fact, almost 9% of our gross state product, 9% of our economy nearly in the state of Washington comes from the arts, the creative arts and all of its forms and expressions. It is so central to our success. So to our jurors awards, thank you for serving on this. To the 16 of them statewide, thank you for taking the time to dive in. Here are the jurors awards. Hi, my name is Michelle Hakewood, and I'm the Program Manager for Artist Residencies at Centrum. And it's my great pleasure to announce Adeline Crone from Avanti High School in the Olympia School District ESD 113 in Cicely Schmidt's class as one of this year's Juror's Choice for the piece, The Track to Ukraine. Hello, my name is Adeline Crone. I am the creator of the art piece, The Track to Ukraine. So it all started with a very old Belarusian marching song called which translates to how it was on the track, hence the track to Ukraine. It is a song that was sung at funerals during World War I, and the lyrics describe how nearly every mother lost their son to war in Eastern Europe. So it was one of my biggest inspirations, and I kept thinking about this song as I drew the track to Ukraine. It's an incredible mixture, I think, of tragedy and beauty combined into a song. And I really wanted to paint a piece that could almost imitate that exact feeling um, of hardship, starvation, assimilation, and war. So for the competition theme, Mirrors and Windows, I really wanted to paint, I think, a window to Eastern Europe so that, you know, one can understand Ukraine's hardships and so that as an audience member, you can even taste our fight for freedom. So thank you and glory to Ukraine. This piece exemplified risk-taking and a way of presenting something horrible in the form of a beautifully executed piece that gives us little choice but to face the consequences of war and forces of oppression that are at work. But it also has notes of hope and resistance and presents a real opportunity for discussion around what protest looks like and what perseverance looks like. And I think that this is one of the things that art education and art gives us. Hello, my name is Michael Hollins. I'm the superintendent of the Junior and Senior High Art Show here at the Washington State Fair. I would like to congratulate Puyallup High School teacher Dory Coleman and her student Erwin Limerick for our work titled Immigrant Stereotypes. My name is Erwin Limerick and I go to Puyallup High School in the city of Puyallup. In my piece, Immigrant Stereotypes, 
was inspired by a TED talk from Chimamanda Adichie. I made my piece to look like a magazine cover, on the left side showing Adichie's success as an author in America, and on the right side showing what immigrant stereotypes often reduced her to. For me, art is most impactful because it's the way I can best voice um, my passions and my ideas, and I use colored pencils most of the time in my artwork, but specifically for this piece, I wanted to use colored pencil um, to make the magazine cover look as realistic as possible and to reflect the serious nature of the topic. All of my artwork, but specifically this piece, reflects my passion for social justice. But the amazing thing about art is that I think you learn the most in the process about not only yourself, but about the rest of the world. What inspires you to make an art piece and how people interpret your art is really how you learn about the rest of the world and how you can derive knowledge from your own artwork. After watching a TED talk on the danger of immigrant stereotypes, she decided to design her own magazine cover. This graphic design illustration was drawn with incredible realism in two halves, one in color and the other in black and white, utilizing colored pencil and graphite at a size of 12 by 14 inches. It's an incredible rendering and a much needed social commentary from a fellow artist in my community and it makes me proud. Hello, my name is Tamar Krames. I'm the Arts and Education Program Manager at the Washington State Arts Commission, also known as ArtsWA. Um, it was a honor to serve as a juror this year, and I'm going to talk about a piece I selected titled Escapism. The artist is Toko Kameda, coming from Kamiak High School in the Mukilteo School District, ESD 189, working with teacher Emily Palmater. Hello, my name is Toko Kameda, and I'm from Kamiak High School in Mukilteo, Washington. My art piece is everything about trying to express my emotions. I'm a rather quiet person, and I don't really show much facial expression when I'm around people. So the pandemic and the face coverings, I think, made it extra harder for other people to get a sense of what I'm thinking each day. Art and the use of colors and textures were a great way for me to deliver my emotions, and the texture of watercolor paintings in particular helps to capture that sensitive yet complex emotions behind my blank expression. Human faces are always an inspiration for me because of all the different emotions people hide in their face that may or may not be visible at that moment. I love the depth that people have in their face and their facial expressions, and I always choose watercolor when portraying human faces because the layers and the transparency of the paint, I think, uh, best works when I'm trying to recreate the depth of people's expression. I found the piece to be both peaceful, spacious, and also a commentary on how we have had to live during the COVID pandemic, having access to the visual arts and being able to uh, learn about storytelling through visual mediums of many kinds impacted my life in so many ways and continues to, to this day. Um, thank you teachers, thank you students for working in the arts. Hello, my name is Miguel Guillen. I work for the Washington State Arts Commission. I had the honor of being a juror for the 49th annual Students High School Arts Show. It's my pleasure to announce Innocent Rumination is recipient of the Jurors Award. This piece was created by Rachel Peterson of On Track Academy, Spokane Public Schools, ESD 101. Uh, Rachel's teacher is Erin Bangle. Hi, I'm Rachel Peterson. I go to On Track Academy in Spokane, Washington, and today I will be showing you my most challenging and largest stained glass piece. It's really become a passion for me. I've learned how to do intricate wire work, how to strengthen a large piece such as mine, which is 20 by 24 inches with 167 individual pieces, and much more. So please enjoy this video showing the process of making the piece. Of all the amazing works submitted to this competition, this piece in particular, in its brightness and calm, brought a smile to my face every time I saw it. Working in stained glass is difficult. I know, I've tried it. 
There's so many small pieces. Creating a stained glass piece is lots of work requiring skill and focus. I was impressed with this warm and whimsical achievement. This isn't the first time I've been a juror for this competition, and it is and was a pleasure to view all the amazing artworks that were submitted. As always, I was impressed also with the enormous amount of talent in our state. Keep it up, everybody. Hello, I'm Willow Fox, the Collections Registrar for the King County Public Art Collection, managed by Four Culture. I had the honor of being a juror for the 2022 Annual Superintendent's High School Art Show. Today I'm pleased to announce one of the art awards, which is presented to Patricia Katakutin for The Real Me That You See, her beautiful self-portrait rendered in charcoal. Patricia is a student of Tamara Hudenpeel at the Ridgefield High School in the Ridgefield School District, ESD 112. My name is Patricia Katakutan. Um, I go to Ridgefield High School and my piece, the really neat that you see is a charcoal piece. I haven't used charcoal in a long time and I think it was really challenging but also fun because I get to play with the monochromatic scale and seeing how I can play with um, the dark colors and light colors and how to use that when there's no actual um, color. It's just, you know, black and white. This piece is all about, for me, just like a reflection on myself because I get so caught up on what I do like about myself and what I don't. And that's what this piece is about because I try to just show off my things that I don't find perfect in myself. So like my nose or like my skin. And so what I put on that piece of paper, that charcoal piece is just me. I try to show me in my realist form. And I think, you know, art is all about expressing yourself and just being able to reflect and grow. I selected this artwork for an award because of the sensitivity of Patricia's composition and technique, the honesty of her portraiture, and the unusual perspective. The textures of the fabric, hair, and face are all unique and immediately give the feeling of being able to touch the person in the drawing. Congratulations to Patricia and all the artists who participated in this year's art show. It is an achievement to be proud of, and I hope it will encourage you to continue making art as long as you are able. Again, thank you to our Jurors Award um, folks who served to look at this art and just really appreciate and recognize it. This year I was really moved by lots of the pieces because as we've sort of come out of the pandemic or we're trying to come out of the pandemic, so much of the student reflection this year is about how they faced adversity and how they've turned that into expression and a lot of reflection about themselves, which is really a central part and a central theme of this year's art show. So again, totally awesome stuff here. We have partner organizations that have been a part of the art show for a very long time, and we want to thank them. They too make selections. They're a part of the process from the local to the regional to the state level. Um, nonprofit organizations and organizations within the education community. So thank you for being a part of this as well. Um, our students benefit when so many voices and so many visions and experiences get to reflect on their art. We start with two, Inspire Washington and Arts Ed Washington. Hi, I'm Madeline Dalton. I'm representing Inspire Washington, and this is the piece Gender Fluid by Samantha Kotalak with the teacher Krista Mallory from Glacier Peak High School in the Snohomish School District, ESD 189. Hi, my name is Samantha Kotalak. I am a senior at Glacier Peak High School in Snohomish, Washington. I created my artwork Gender Fluid by taking a picture of myself wearing makeup. I then printed out numerous copies of this picture, each picture decreasing in saturation. I then layered the pictures on top of each other and ripped the middle of each picture to varying degrees. After this was finished, I took a picture of the final product and manipulated the colors in Photoshop using the camera raw feature. This artwork is important to me because it is a representation of my experiences as a member of the LGBTQ plus community. I am no stranger to the harsh treatment we face from those who do not support the LGBTQ plus community. I want to reflect on the pain that comes from this treatment through the use of the tears and dark background shown in the photograph. While the life of an LGBTQ plus person is difficult, I want to also show the beauty that comes with living as your true self through the vibrant colors present in the picture. 
We chose this piece because it's a really complex, compelling story that's told through texture and depth and color. It's almost like you can see a portal into the subject's mind. At Inspire Washington, we are huge supporters of our youth artists, and we believe that their gifts need to be shared with the region and with the whole world because they have something really valuable to say. Hello, I'm Katie Lapierre, board president of Arts Ed Washington, and we are so pleased to announce Annika Hansen as the winner of our selection for OSPI's high school art show this year. Annika's teacher is Rose Honey, and Annika is in the West Valley School District in ESD 101. Congratulations. Hi, my name is Annika Hansen. I go to West Valley High School in Spokane, Washington, and I'm a mixed media realism artist. With my art, I typically create things involving nature and with a peaceful, calming feeling to it. And I also love to put deeper meaning behind my art, and that is exactly what I did with this acrylic painting titled The Girl in the Lupine Field. With this painting, I wanted to show how I find beauty in being alone with my thoughts and the things I love. And as an artist, I hope I can continue to help people feel understood through my art. I hope people can relate to my art and find comfort in it. We were really thrilled to select Annika's piece because of the detail in the brush strokes. We saw texture and movement, and as well as the color palette being very dynamic and also very cohesive. Um, and one of the things that was really special to us is the artist statement that Annika submitted which talked about having to persevere through a piece that kind of became a little difficult, but she really spoke to persevering through that challenge. And I think that that's one of the things that the arts helps us do among many other things is to persevere and to um, push ourselves to do more or go beyond what we thought maybe previously we could attain. And so we felt like that was a wonderful thing we wanted to honor with this piece. And we are again, so pleased to recognize Annika. Visual art has a magical sort of power. When you take the time to really look at it, it can raise all sort of emotions and feelings and thoughts inside of you. What if you take all of that and put it into words, into a poem? Well, that's called a crastic. We've invited people to be inspired by the art in this year's show to write a crastic poems. We have selected a few to share with you. By Lucy Jones, Five Mile Prairie School. Life can be so hectic, so much to see and do. Jobs, school, family, responsibilities too. Taking all your time and space so that nothing's fun to do. So reach out, receive the help offered by a few. Look towards the light, there's still hope for you. Read by Rain Anderson. By Kenzie Sletcha, River Home Lake. Their eyes glare into me like branding on my skin. Their words fill my head with words I've never said. Everything they've said has changed the once kind person I used to be into someone harsh and cold. I fight to stop listening. They hold me there in their web of lies like rope binding, abused, my heart closed. Read by Summer Sedgley. By Thomas Knuth, River Homelink School. Abused, misused, confused, so white. It's bright. Call Jamal in the fall. He's tall down the hall. 
Read by Charlie Bovey. Garden by Susie Knight, OSPI volunteer. Life springs like a watering can, bringing life to the flowers and to the dragonflies as well. As the sunshine sparkles on gossamer wings, a green leaf touches my hand. My garden, my soul. Read by Joey Johnson. This sort of combination of art and ekphrastic art is amazing. As having raised two teenagers in the last two years, I really understand that sense of heaviness and weightiness expressed in those pieces. And uh, just thank you so much students for being the voice of really thousands, if not millions of students who really felt that recently. So thank you so very, very much. We move on to two other partner organizations right now, the Professional Educator Standards Board. They're in charge of making sure that our teachers are fully prepared and the best in the country, and we know we have the best educators in the United States. PESB's got a recognition award here that I think is awesome, and our partner at the State Board of Education. They're in charge of our graduation standards, and they really set a vision for the state around individualized learning and pathways so that all of our students see themselves in education and they have a hope for where they're going. Take it away, PESB and SBE. I am Dr. Erica Hernandez Scott, Interim Executive Director from the Professional Educator Standards Board. We're excited to tell you about our artwork selection from the Superintendent's Art Show. Um, as you can see behind me, we have chosen Mount Tahoma by Layla Chavez. Her teacher is Joshua Everson from Olympia High School in the Olympia School District, ESD 113. Hello, my name is Layla Chavez and I'm a junior at Olympia High School in Olympia, Washington. My piece titled Mount Tahoma was based off the childlike wonder and nostalgia of growing up in the Pacific Northwest. In all my artwork, I use bright colors and whimsical patterns to portray a childlike perspective. Instead of focusing on realism, I let my imagination run wild and see where it takes me. So for this piece, I used watercolor and gouache to paint one of Washington's most beautiful features, and that is Mount Tahoma or Mount Rainier. Art means a lot because during the COVID-19 pandemic, in one of the most confined times of my life, I was able to express myself. I was also able to use art to be an activist and talk about climate change, which is an issue that I feel is really important to me. Something called art activism or artivism is something that I think is really important to the world and something we can use to make the world a better place. We selected this art piece for a few reasons. First, it's a celebration of the land of Washington. You can really feel the joy coming right off the page. The arts are an expression of the human experience and it's wonderful to see how Layla used the opportunity to express her love and admiration for our land. Thank you for sharing it with the Professional Educator Standards Board. We will love it and honor it for years to come. Hello, I'm Stephanie Davidsmeyer, Communications Manager at the Washington State Board of Education. Our selection this year is Anxiety by Sydney Phelps. Sydney goes to South Kitsap High School in South Kitsap School District, part of ESD 114. Sydney's art educator is Donald Sandman. Hello, my name is Sydney Phelps, but I prefer to go by Luna Phelps. I'm from South Kitsap High School in Port Orchard, Washington, and I created the piece Anxiety. Um, for the most part, I work with colored pencils and pencils and pens but I really wanted to push my ability as soon as I got into AP art. So I started to use paint pens and pens and gel pens. For the most part, what inspired this piece was honestly my therapy and my therapist asking me to create pieces that represent me and how I feel and what happens in my brain on a daily basis. So I took my anxiety that I feel at school or at home or just when I wake up in the morning and I put it on a piece of paper. There wasn't much thought behind it except how do I feel in that exact moment? It's pretty out of the ordinary for me to do stuff like that. 
but I am very proud of it and I hope to do more stuff like that in the future. In a letter to Sydney, our executive director wrote, this piece is only nine by 12 inches, but the contrast and pen work make a big impact. It's a piece that you can't help but consider. On behalf of the State Board of Education, I sincerely thank Sydney Phelps for using talent and creativity to create something representative of our times. Thank you again to our uh, Professional Educator Standards Board and our State Board of Education staff and board members. Really appreciate you recognizing our awesome student artists. We've got four more organizations here uh, that help us in incredible ways in our school system. As you might imagine, our school principals at AWSP, our school superintendents, a group called WASA, and our elected school board member directors. There's 1,477 of them across the state of Washington representing our communities. That's an organization called WASA, our School Directors Association. And of course, our educators, many of whom are represented by the Washington Education Association. So many lenses on the student experience and so much perspective. So thank you to these four organizations. Let's have a look at their selections this year. Hello, my name is Tim Garshaw and I serve as the Executive Director for the Washington State School Directors Association, coming to you today from the traditional lands of the Nisqually and Squaxin Island tribes. This year we selected the artwork of Ella Sharon from the Olympia High School in ESD 113. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ella Sharon. My river is the Kalitz River and I am from the Kalitz and Abenaki tribes. My art piece is a contemporary and traditional hand drum with a rain seals the sun story painted on the front using traditional and contemporary designs to create the idea. I have made it to go along with my AP portfolio focusing on traditional and contemporary native art and combining the two ideas to be able to create a new genre that is reflects more of what you see in the powwow scene today. We selected Ella's art piece, acrylic on rawhide hand drum with designs from the Cowlitz tribe for its elegance, beauty, and connection to the indigenous people of Washington State. Ella, you're a tremendous artist, and we are honored to have your artwork on display at our student art gallery here at WASDA headquarters. WASDA continues supporting the high school student art show because we feel that it's a solid way to support young artists in their endeavors, as well as arts education statewide. Thank you, Ella. We are honored to have your art. Hello, my name is Joel Ani, and I'm the executive director of the Washington Association of School Administrators. It is my pleasure to announce this year's WASA Award winner, Anessa Hansen, student at Wenatchee High School in the Wenatchee School District in ESD 171. My name is Anessa Hansen. I'm from Wenatchee and I go to Wenatchee High School. This year's theme was mirrors and windows, visions and knowing. And I feel like I connect with my painting Sunflower Meadow because I tend to see the glass half full instead of half empty. And sunflowers are known as bright, happy flowers. I chose oils for my medium for this piece because Oils are my favorite type of paint, and they've really brought the vibrancy into this, what feels like never-ending field of sunflowers. My painting Sunflower Meadow was inspired by my love for the flower. I love how when the flowers are young, they follow the sun, and this painting is symbolic for peace for multiple reasons. One of them being that sunflowers are the national flower for Ukraine, and Ukraine desperately needs peace right now. My other reason is when I do art or when I'm painting, I feel at ease. Painting is my happy place. I just need my palette and my canvas and I just let go. I just detach and I feel no stress. When I first saw Anessa's piece, Sunflower Meadow, it immediately reminded me of some of my favorite Van Gogh pieces. She spoke of her methodical and patient attention to detail 
which is clearly evident in the painting. Anessa mentions that the painting could not have reached its full potential without spending as much time as she did. Congratulations, Anessa. You have a unique talent, and we are honored to share a bit of that talent with the WASA staff and those who visit our offices during the course of the coming year. Thank you and good luck. Hi, my name is Caroline Brumfield, and I'm the Graphic Design and Marketing Manager at the Association of Washington School Principals in Olympia. AWSP is very excited to announce that the piece we chose for this year's OSPI Student Art Show is Brown Eyes by Tegan Bushman in Miss Jones's class at Chiawana High School in Pasco School District, ESD 123. My name is Tegan Bushman and I'm a student at Chiawana High School in Pasco, Washington. Something that inspired my piece was doing research about different portrait photographers and seeing how they were able to capture different emotions and just the beauty of someone and tell a story or even express different beliefs that they had. I learned that it takes a lot more than you think it does to take a picture and to take the perfect picture. And I was able to think outside the box and not just settle for the pictures that I had. Art has made a difference in my life and it's made me a more creative person and helped me to appreciate the value of art even more. Our association has participated in the OSPI Art Show for many years now, but it's been a while since we've chosen a photography piece. Tegan's photo caught our eye because of the lighting and because of the beautiful child in the photo and because the title and the subject provide a glimpse into the diversity of students in Washington State. The photo will be displayed in our office and will serve as a reminder of the work we do each day to support school leaders and the students in their schools. Congratulations, Tegan, and we hope that you will continue to pursue a future in the arts. Hello, this is Larry Delaney. I'm president of the Washington Education Association. And on behalf of the 90,000 WEA members statewide, it gives me great pride to announce that the WEA selection in this year's Superintendent's Art Show is the piece Pride and Unity by Mariah Von Baron. Mariah is a student at Mount Spokane High School in the Meade School District in ESD 101 and is in Angelica Wilson Whip's classroom. My name is Mariah Von Baron, and I'm a senior at Mount Spokane High School in Spokane, Washington. This is a piece I made earlier this year for my AP portfolio, and I thought it'd be perfect to submit to this competition as well. I believe that art has the power to impact people emotionally and then ultimately change the world. And so as a queer student, I wanted to create a piece that would reflect the love and strength of that community. Um, I also wanted to depict multiple skin tones to truly show that love has no bounds whether that is platonic or romantic. Um, so I hope that this piece can inspire you as much as it has inspired me. Mariah's statement spoke to, uh, spoke to me in particular when she said, no matter your race, age, or gender expression, one should be free to care for whoever they choose. This aligns so perfectly with WEA's values and we fly a pride flag outside of our building in federal way 24-7, 365 is a message to our students and educators and community members around the state that we see you and we support you. Thank you for this work, Mariah. Thank you to our partner organizations. And, and again, thank you, WEA, for recognition of student art that really demonstrates the moment we are in. Art has this power of expression of social justice and of equity. And they've really picked a piece here uh, that references that and makes uh, a powerful contribution to our work in, in the art show. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Honoring culture and community is exactly what this is about. So we go back to Amelia for more. How amazing is it when you can combine your personal heritage and your art? Students in Mount Vernon High School's Grupo Folklorico 
explore traditional music and dance across Mexico. Their mission is to build persistence by strengthening their cultural identity. Grupo Folklorico, under the direction of Ramon Rivera, has performed for the governor and has been featured in local news. Now, please turn your attention to Grupo Folklorico performing La Bamba, a traditional dance from Veracruz, Mexico. Oh, thank you so much for that dance piece again from the Mount Vernon team. It just gets you wanting to dance. Uh, dance is such a powerful connection. It's an expression of art, but it's really a relationship uh, component as well. And it's just fascinating to see students who are so kind of hesitant at the beginning, and then they just flourish by the time that it, it ends. They build this confidence and this connection, and it's so inspiring to see. Thank you so much. Now we recognize another amazing partner, the Washington Art Education Association. These are educators, teachers who have made their careers and their lives out of helping develop young people, their sense of art, their inspiration, their appreciation, and as we know, a massive contribution to the state's economy. They give out three awards every single year, the Youth Art Month flag, the Tribute Award, which really recognizes one of their peers in arts education, and the Wa Art Education Association Award. Here they are with their three recognitions. Hello, my name is Tracy Fortune and I am the Washington Art Education Association Art Month Banner Contest representative. Youth Art Month is celebrated each year across the country and a flag from each state is displayed at the National Art Convention. The art contest is open to students in kindergarten through grade 12. Typically, the winning design is by a high school student, but this year's top honor goes to fifth grader Rebecca Wu. 
The 2022 theme was Art Heals Us, and Rebecca creatively and skillfully captured many aspects of art and its healing power. Flowing line designs, a soft color palette, and delightful imagery work together to create a unified banner. A copy of her flag has been sent to Rebecca's school, and another one will be up on display at the OSPI building in Olympia. Rebecca has also been awarded a scholarship given in honor of Charlene Dixon, the 2017 YAM flag winner. Congratulations to Rebecca Wu and her teacher, Sun Young Kwan, from Studio S Fine Arts School in Bellevue. The Washington Art Education Association Tribute Award recognizes an individual or group who over time has made significant contributions to the arts in Washington State. Today, we congratulate Mary Atkinson as the 2022 WAEA Tribute Award winner. Hi, I'm Mary Atkinson, and I want to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt delight for receiving the WAEA Tribute Award. This is a great honor for me. I'm grateful for my WAEA family for the support and encouragement throughout my work in various WAEA roles as an educator and advocate. WAEA has been alongside me every step of the way through many challenges, growth, and celebrations. I still remember the moment I found my people in WAEA and NAEA, my companions in understanding the arts as an indispensable part of life. The arts form the connective threads that flow through all other content areas as well as life. It really does all start with art. WAEA empowers members to discover their potential and supports the work that needs to be done along the way. The Tribute Award is a significant milestone in my life, and I will be forever grateful for this honor. Mary was nominated by her peers for this award for her many years of service as a devoted arts educator and leader. Mary has served with multiple arts organizations in numerous roles at regional, state, and national levels. She has been honored with several awards, including the 2018 WAEA Art Teacher of the Year. Her leadership, achievements, and extensive background show her passionate dedication to arts education advocacy in our state. The following work of art from the Superintendent's High School Art Show is dedicated to Mary Atkinson. The Washington Art Education Association wants to congratulate Audrey Stenger on her artwork Star Balloons for being voted the top artwork by our organization. Hi, my name is Audrey Stenger. I go to the Vancouver School of Arts and Academics and I live in Vancouver, Washington. Uh, this is the piece I submitted. It has blue and silver star balloons. I had originally gotten these balloons for my dad for Father's Day, but then I was thinking it might be fun to paint them and play around with the reflections you could see in them. Um, so I had my brother go outside with me and he held them while I took a photo. Uh, this is actually the entrance to my house, which I thought was pretty cool to be shown in one of my paintings. During quarantine, I had a lot of free time, so I thought it might be fun to play around with some mediums and find out what I liked to paint with. Um, I found out I really like acrylic paints and I like to use uh, graphite and sometimes color pencil as well. We feel that Audrey's artwork, Star Balloons, encapsulates the purpose and beauty of our organization and shows a true artistic eye. Our Washington Art Education Association board enjoyed her artistic composition that draws your eyes from the top left to the bottom right. Additionally, we were most moved by the personal touches that were added to the artwork, such as the reflection of Audrey's home, which holds significance for not only herself, but is a symbol of importance to many. Furthermore, her use of shading and highlighting was skillfully done and impressed our committee. Congratulations again, Audrey. I got my first cell phone when I was 12. And yes, I'm Gen Z, but we're not only consumers of media, we are also producers. I'd like to introduce you to the work of Emmy Award-winning student, Piper Jensen from Port Angeles High School. She created this non-linear interview formatted for broadcast television. Please join me in watching Straight Slice Pizza.
Hi, I'm Scott Sullivan, and I'm the founder and owner of the Straight Slice Pizza Company in Port Angeles, Washington. I was six years old when I came up with that idea to start a restaurant. It all started out when Scott was in transition from being a professional photographer for a very, very long time. Her teacher said, hey, we were talking in class today doing a show and tell, and Scarlett said that you guys are gonna open up a restaurant. And I said, huh. I don't remember that. But the seed was planted. I started tossing around the ideas of doing a pizza truck. And for the next six months, I started thinking about what it would be like to own our own pizza place. One day we were walking down the street in front of our window right there. Um, there was a for rent sign. And Scott looked in and we both were like, yeah. The reason why we named our pizza place Straight Slice is because we live on the Strait of Juan de Fuca and because that's my initial S and my dad's. Before I was a professional photographer, I had worked in a lot of restaurants, so I had the general idea of how to make a business where I focused on one thing and that was making pizza. We all really care about pizza. Pizza is an art form to us and we take it really seriously. We're very passionate about it. So we are hands-on from start to finish with all of our fresh ingredients. When I moved out to the West Coast, to Port Angeles, I looked around and I realized there was no real quality pizza of the type that I like. And I like the nice thin crust New York pizza, hand tossed, available by the big old slices where you can fold them in half. I like to be creative with the slices. I like to let my cooks that are working with me as well, let them be creative when it comes to our specials. We make everything from scratch right here, all our sauces, all of our doughs. We make giant 18 inch pizzas available by the slice or by the whole pie. And we also do calzones, salads, beer and wine, and chocolate chip cookies. Well, for the cookies, uh, we knew we needed something besides just pizza. I love chocolate chip cookies. And cookies are just really good. Oh, I love the cookies. <laughs> they make me so happy inside. So we got a couple different recipes from a few different people and I messed around with it quite a bit. And I can definitely say I had a few tears over getting that cookie proper. When I built the place, first thing I brought in was a piano. Next thing was a record player. And then I started building the restaurant. So my idea was I'm gonna hang out all day. I'm gonna listen to music. I'm gonna make pizza. And I'm gonna send people away with, with a smile on their face and a full belly. I think my dad's pizza is great. Having my parents own the place is really nice because it gets me involved in the workforce. So I kind of learn what good and bad, like what not to do, you know? Well, here we are now, we're six years in, and we are still a mom and pop family, small run business. We plan to be here for years to come, and we're happy to be part of this town, this growing town in small town America, which is Port Angeles. Congratulations to Piper and her teacher, uh, Patrick McKinnis. The setup of the shots, the editing, uh, the use of humor, still getting the core content out there, the use of color, just totally, totally awesome. And if you're watching the art show, you now know obviously how amazing our students are, but the technology that they're infusing in their work, which is really one of our art standards, is amazing. Our young people are creating digital art in ways we have never imagined before. It is totally, totally impressive. Well, every year, as some of you know, this art show takes on a culmination here at the old Capitol building, uh, but it starts with students in a classroom thinking of concepts and getting direct instruction from teachers and being inspired by something they're thinking about. Maybe it's an assignment, Maybe they were a little begrudging, but by the end, they've really created something and it competes at a local level, maybe a school level, at our educational service district level. And ultimately, folks are recognizing this art and bringing it to the state art show for consideration. So we thank everybody along the way. It's been incredible this year. And every year we recognize some honorable mentions. We've got four that we're gonna recognize today.
Sophia Rusk, Mina Birds, Pen and Ink, Innovation High School, Pride Schools. Teacher, Rebecca Silva Clenard, ESD 101. Also, Ryan Sanchez, Carrion, Charcoal, Oak Harbor High School, Oak Harbor School District. Teacher is Kit Christofferson. This is ESD 189 in Northwest Washington. We also want to recognize Fiona Whitaker, Jewel Chest with Drawer. It's a ceramic piece. Fiona's from Olympia High School in Olympia, Washington. Her teacher is Katie Janner, ESD 113. And finally, Malia O'Hira, Sterling Silver. The piece is solid to the touch. Auburn Riverside High School in Auburn, Washington. Teacher Kyle Reese from Educational Service District 121. Congratulations to our honorable mentions. Thank you so much for giving a piece of your art to the entire state of Washington. Our next recognition comes from Central Washington University's Art for Change Scholarship Program. Every year, Central Washington University teams go to all of the regions to look at art, and they recognize students, and they're giving away two $2,000 scholarships for students. A lot of times, art expression doesn't end in high school. You can take it all the way to the next level and beyond. Thank you so much to the Central Washington team, specifically to Greg Schlanger, Chair of the Department of Art and Design. Congratulations to the students. Here are their recognitions. Hello, my name is Greg Schlanger. I am the Chair of the Department of Art and Design at Central Washington University. The Department of Art and Design offers several degree programs in studio art, graphic design, and art education. The awards I'm presenting are CWU scholarships, the CWU Art for Change Award. This award recognizes artwork that strives to create awareness about current issues and challenges facing high school students today. Socially engaged art and design can challenge the many forms of injustice, raise consciousness on various issues, question existing systems, strengthen communities, create a more just world, preserve traditional cultural practices. It can produce a broad range of outcomes. Each student receiving an award will receive an award certificate and letter with specific details on the award. We are presenting two awards today. Both awards are $2,000 CWU scholarships. The first award is to Isabel Eilis from AC Davis High School in Yakima School District. Uh, Isabel's teacher is Carol Holtz. Isabel's work titled Botanical Refuge. This extremely well executed colored pencil drawing demonstrates an excellent handling of the material. The self-portrait speaks loudly about the current year. I enjoy the use of the garden materials for the mask, a fresh breath we all need. As Isabel states, breathing in fresh air became my anchor. My garden is my safe harbor. Our next award goes to Clara Tuning. Clara is from Goldendale High School in the Goldendale School District. Uh, Clara's teacher is Scott Gray. Clara's piece, Call for Help. This exceptionally well-rendered drawing makes use of several drawing media. One can feel the anguish as she clutches the pillow and hangs onto the phone with a weapon lurking in the background. This piece so well represents the suicide crisis in our society today and hopefully creates a little more awareness. Thank you, Clara, for including the number for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline in your description. 800-273-8255. Congratulations to Clara and Isabel. 
Well, every year I am blessed to select a piece of art that stays up here at OSPI in the Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction, something that inspires me and moves me. As you can see from last year, I was really drawn at first to the colors, but also we were in the middle of a pandemic and I was observing a lot of tension, but specifically how some of our students totally embraced the change and the transformation and the technology and how sometimes there was a culture clash uh, in families. This piece to this day I get to see it every single day. This year I went a little different direction. OSPI's building in downtown Olympia is the old Capitol building. Um, many people refer to it as Hogwarts. It kind of looks like a castle and you're drawn to it. So students of architecture and folks who just love to be in old downtowns, they're kind of drawn to it. What they often don't know is inside of it are 430 professionals who give their lives every single day to public education. And this year I picked this. Normally it would be something, a connection to my personal family, but this year I was moved by this wintry scene from Jacob Reeves. It's ink and watercolor combined, which is very, very impressive. But it just spoke to me because in the middle of all of the tension of the last two years and the challenges, even in the quietest of moments, when the snow falls and you don't hear very much, every day this staff was coming in, working very, very hard so that next day and the day after and the day after, was better for student success. So that I chose this award this year in recognition of the staff and the teams at OSPI who are always leading towards student achievement. I am so thankful for them. And this piece just absolutely stood out for me because it was a reflection. Again, our theme is mirrors. It was a reflection of what we get to do every single day. So thanks again, Jacob. It's an awesome piece. And I wanna recognize your teacher, Joshua Everson, Olympia High School educator here in Educational Service District 113 in the South Puget Sound. I'm going to unveil the piece very carefully and we'll get a nice tight shot of this so others can see the inspiration that Olympians get to see every time they drive by the old Capitol building. Hi, I'm Jacob Reeves. Um, I'm a senior at Olympia High School, and I've lived in Olympia, Washington for my whole life. So my piece, Old Capitol, which is uh, a pretty small landscape illustration of the Old Capitol building downtown, um, which little did I know is the current OSPI uh, building, so that's a pretty funny coincidence, but it came about in a pretty natural way. I uh, was walking around downtown after this year's snowstorm, um, and I appreciated, you know, the light and how it reflected off of uh, the snow as it was positioned on the roof of the building and surrounding the area. And so I did a quick contour sketch while I was standing at an intersection. And then I really narrowed down the details that I wanted to include in the piece. I went over it in ink pen and finally filled it in with watercolor paint. So after high school, I'm going to study architecture. And throughout my uh, AP Studio Art class this year, um, I've mainly focused on how an architect can best convey an emotion or feeling that a viewer might have in a space. And I think this is a really important skill to have for architects as they have to pitch renders to clients um, all the time. And so this medium of ink pen and watercolor that I've been using throughout the year, uh, I think is, a, is both a great way for architects to do so, but it's also just uh, a really effective medium for drawing uh, buildings or other spatial forms. Again, thank you so much, Jacob. Uh, this piece really moved me, and I think it's a tremendous um, recognition too of the, of the great place we are honored to work and for all of our staff, thank you so much. Well, that kind of brings us to the end of the 49th art show. Uh, next year is a huge year for us, our 50th year. And as part of that, we have been thinking about a little bit of a rebrand. We've engaged students in a concept where they would think about how to brand it a little differently, integrate it into our OSPI logo. But rather than pick it ourselves, we're gonna let you decide. There will be links here and there'll be links on our website and there'll be lots of opportunities for folks. But we've got some students who have put together some concepts. You'll have three choices. Option one, palette. Option two, brush. Option three, bowl. Take your time, make your selection, but you're gonna help shape the future of the art show with a rebrand and a new logo. So thanks for being a part of that. 
And thanks to everybody for being a part of the 49th show. We've integrated some incredible arts work. We brought in student presenters. Thank you, Amelia, to our ESD partners who help facilitate the artwork through the regional process and to here, to our staff behind the cameras, to our video producers, to Janet, our amazing leader in arts education here at OSPI. This is an entire family that puts this together, but we do it for students. We believe in you. We care about you. We want you to be successful and the world is a better place when expression comes to life for all of us to experience and make our own interpretation. We are in fact mirrors to each other and our art is a mirror of ourselves. And when we are expressing, we have hope, we have opportunity and we have connection. Thank you artists. Thank you to everyone who's been behind the work here. We will see you at the 50th next year. When I saw the mirrors and windows theme for this year, I was immediately able to make connections to the art I made. As a whole, it's a mirror of the battle between my hope for top surgery as a transgender guy and both my struggle with anorexia and my devastation when the insurance denied coverage of my surgery. The outer ring of my piece reflects raw hopelessness and overwhelm, while the inner circle was initially a window into the possible future I was grasping toward. Now that I am in recovery from my eating disorder and two months post top surgery, I'm proud to say that the strong bodies I drew actually mirror my own. I was inspired to create my piece, The Real Cost, after attending a rally in Salt Lake City to bring awareness to human trafficking. At this rally, there were tons of signs that had powerful artwork on them that compelled me to create my own. When it comes to creating art, I've always struggled committing to a concept and completing it. This piece pushed me to do so because it was something I felt very strongly about and was the composition I had total confidence in. My piece, uh, The Seaweed Sensations, was mostly inspired by uh, the organic connection to um, the earth and nature that I feel art has always given me. My artwork has always been inspired by nature. I always look for the shapes and how nature flows and how it uh, recombines itself in different ways. Uh, so I was uh, taken by the color of the central piece and how um, the different colors flowed in between each other and created these really beautiful lines. So I took those lines from the center stone and I implemented them into the band of my ring. I have always loved doing art and it's always been a great stress relief. The title of my art piece is Duality, and the inspiration for this piece comes from repeated patterns that I, I see in nature and the human body, and the direct relationship that humans tend to have with our natural environment. My thought process behind making art is pretty broad, but it usually revolves around three different ideas. Those being pieces I make to challenge myself and improve my skill, pieces I enjoy making, and pieces that, I, that help me express who I am, what I'm feeling, and as well as previous life experiences. My first experience with ceramics was when I took my first intro to ceramics class from my freshman year, and I honestly didn't think much of it until I decided to take an AP art class my senior year, which is my current year. I decided to do 3D AP art to experiment with new materials, but I honestly loved working with ceramic clay during my first project, and that's what I decided to stick with. Although it was challenging working with an almost completely new medium and learning new methods that I have forgotten, I managed to learn as I went. The idea of this piece was to be able to show the contrast between two completely different points of views, being similar enough that they could relate, but also different enough that you could tell each had a completely different story, and I did somewhat struggle on making. I had to almost completely restart this piece when I accidentally let the fingers start too much, as well as when I accidentally broke some of them off unintentionally. Not to mention that I almost gave up when I didn't realize that I had made two right hands instead of a matching set of hands, and so I had to make a completely new left hand. Overall, I struggled quite a bit as this was my third ceramic project of the year, but I really enjoyed the overall result of my work. For me, art has been a lot of different things over the years. At first, when I was younger, I did a lot of, you know, just sketchings and drawings, and honestly, I kind of stopped caring when I got a little bit older, until I got to high school and saw that there was a photography class that I could take. So I signed up for it. I wasn't really sure how I was going to feel about it. I ended up taking it all three years I've been here, both semesters, 
the entire time, and I have loved every minute of it. I've found that photography has helped me express a new style of thinking. I don't know if that makes sense, but it does to me. A new, a new style of thinking. Photography, or in general, I guess, but for me it's photography, can help us explain and understand and demonstrate these thoughts and feelings and emotions and these abstract concepts that it would be really, really hard for us to process in words. And I, I love that. It's helped me grow as a student and as a person ever since I've taken this class. I've always had a passion for art and learning new things with art. It's always been a big part of my life and it's because I find it calming even in the loudest of places. When I was making this specific piece of art, I was trying to teach myself how to paint new things, specifically flowers. And I was learning from my teacher how to uh, digitally alter different kinds of images. I'm really happy to see where those specific flowers that I painted went after I edited them. I've been making art for as long as I can remember because it allows me to express myself in ways that I never could with words. My piece, Insides, is about reconnecting with the emotions that I couldn't express and finally finding who I am. This piece took a lot. It's one of the most extensive, most complicated pieces I have ever created due to the medium being charcoal and also due to the small minute details of the portrait that was taken of me by one of my best friends. Art like this has made such a difference in my life. Pouring myself out onto the page, onto the canvas, and giving myself an outlet to express myself has been life-changing, and it's been my passion for as long as I can remember. This piece is a vision of who I am on the inside and how I've changed, and I think that really ties into the theme of w mirrors and windows, visions of knowing, just like being able to see myself on the page and see myself in my eye in my mind's eye in visual form being able to create in such a way it's life-changing and mirrors and windows like are just vision and i feel like that's what art's all about it's visual it's like auditory it's like experience and i think that's what this piece really encompasses about three to five years on photography and it's been a lot of work. You get to learn a lot of interesting things that you can improve. There's different types of possibilities with photography. My inspiration for the photo was a nearby sculpture park and as I was walking by for inspiration, I came across a sculpture that brought interest to my eyes for photography. My main idea was to just get a top photo with a tripod and I instead grabbed a selfie stick and held it over the picture. It took a good few tries but I got the right angle and then edited it and it came out great and it took a lot of tries but it was definitely worth it. Throughout photography, life, uh, it's changed a lot. There's been a lot more opportunities. I've made a lot of money here and there from opportunities of selling photography. Nature photography has been my biggest outlook on photography. It's been my main outlook, and I do landscape photography here and there as well. Photography has been a wild adventure, and I can't wait to learn more here and there. When I was making this piece, the thoughts that were going through my mind was kind of reflecting deep within on how I felt and how I wanted to go out, um, go through in the future. So my piece was Grow From It. And from that, I wanted to illustrate how I want to better myself and learn from my experiences. And the piece itself is an experience in its own right. So that connects itself to the theme because really it reflected my inner thoughts within and really inner thoughts that I believe everyone should follow. I made this by laying out glass pieces in a circle form and then forming it into a vase shape. Uh, I made this because I've always wanted to do a vase project and um, I picked these two colors because green and white I think go really well together and 
The holes in the vase represent um, seeing light through the darkness.